Here's how to get approved for the Chase business cards, but there are a few things to know to make sure you're on the right track. First off, there are really three of them that are worth getting. There's the Chase Inc. Business Cash, the Business Unlimited, and the Chase Inc. Business Preferred. These are some of the best business cards out there because there are no annual fees on the first two options and they have persistently high sign up bonuses. They have 75,000 points for the no annual fee options and then 90,000 points for the Inc. Business Preferred, which has a $95 annual fee. Something to distinguish early on is that the Chase Inc. Business Cash and the Unlimited, they are advertised as cash back cards. However, if you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which are personal cards, or if you also have the Chase Inc. Preferred, you are able to move that cash back from those cards, from the Ink Business cards, and move it over to your Chase Sapphire card or the Ink Business Preferred, and then you're able to use that cash back as ultimate rewards, and then you have access to transfer partners to book free travel, such as using Hyatt for free hotel stays. So that's why I say the sign-up bonus is 75,000 points instead of $750 cash back. Now, which one you should get depends on a few factors. You know, which sign up bonus is highest at the moment? Do you want an annual fee? And which spending multipliers matter most to you? For instance, the Chase Inc. Unlimited gets 1.5 points per dollar that you spend, and Chase Inc. Cash gives you 5x back on select categories such as gas stations, office supply stores, and others. The Chase Inc. Unlimited currently has an elevated sign up bonus of 90,000 points, which is sick. And so, if you are interested in applying to this card, I would appreciate it if you use the referral link down in the description. It's a great way to help out this channel at no cost to you. That is, unless you have a friend's or spouse's referral link to use, but if not, then I would love to be your friend and I'd appreciate it. But before applying, how do we get approved? We're gonna to touch on a little bit of everything here in this video, so once you're done watching this, you'll be able to apply right now. So let's start with a prerequisite. Do you have a business? The answer is typically yes if you have any type of side hustle or hobby whatsoever. You don't have to have a brick and mortar store or a website or anything super official. Here are some common examples of some side businesses or low key businesses that you may not be aware of. Of course, if you sell any products whatsoever, written or digital or anything like that, such as an Etsy store or a book or an ebook that you sell just as a hobby, any reselling, so if you're selling things on Facebook Marketplace, Poshmark, whatever, or if you're a driver for a rideshare service or DoorDash even, that could be counted as an independent contractor. And of course, running a blog, a YouTube channel, you know, some type of social media account that you're trying to monetize also counts as well. And then you've got the other common ones, dog walking, house sitting, babysitting, tutoring, etc. Essentially, anything that you're doing that produces income on the side will qualify you for a business card. And the best part is you can get started today on this side business and still be eligible. You don't even need to be profitable even if you are generating revenue, just so long as you've started the business and you have an intent of making money and profiting. Another the common question is do I need an LLC and before I answer this let me just remind you that my name is Michael with Nurse Michael Travels not an accountant not a lawyer so be sure to take my answer with a grain of salt but in terms of needing an LLC to be eligible for a business card the answer is no you can apply to a business card as a sole proprietor and you don't need to do anything to be able to call yourself a sole proprietor you'll simply just sign up using your name and your social security number on the application which we will get to here in a moment in terms of should you get an LLC for your business that's a totally different question entirely and I recommend that you do your own research with that or consult a professional but you don't really need an LLC to get a business card. And then of course what credit score do I need? A 680 minimum is generally what's recommended. However having it above 700 and 720 is ideal. If you don't have 720 or higher there are some things that you could do to hopefully try to improve your odds and we'll get to those here soon. With the prerequisites out of the way let's get into the Chase 524 rule. Now if you never heard of this rule that is Chase will deny your application essentially outright if you have been approved for five or more personal credit cards within the last 24 months of today so two years. Now, this does not mean five applications, so you can have multiple hard inquiries or you can apply to more than five credit cards, but if you've been approved for five or more, they'll deny. Now, if you don't know what your 524 status is, you'll need to go into your credit report and look at the last 24 months and count the number of personal credit cards that you've received. And while you're at it, go ahead and download the Travel Freely app because you can just insert the dates of the credit cards that you've been approved for and it will automatically keep track of your 524 count and it will let you know when you're due for your next credit card application and a lot of different other metrics that you'll want to keep track of. So I'll have a link for that down in the description for you, so be sure to check that out. If you didn't notice, I'm stressing that it's personal credit cards. Business cards do not count towards your 524 status with a couple of exceptions like with Capital One and Discover cards. Another thing to be aware of is being an authorized user on account. 
There's a lot of mixed information out there, but if you are an authorized user on someone else's personal credit card, typically it counts at the initial application when you submit your application. However, if you're denied because you are 524 or higher, counting the authorized user card, you may be able to call the reconsideration line and get that reversed. However, I was told recently by a commenter on one of my posts that they were denied because they were an authorized user on a business credit card and they were told that although personal authorized users do not count, business card authorized users do count. So it's very confusing. Your mileage may vary. Just general notes. Try not to put anyone authorized user or don't be put as an authorized user on anyone else's accounts from here on out if you're trying to get into this whole points and miles world and apply to various credit cards. So if you meet those prerequisites and if you're under 524, or what are some ways to improve your odds with getting a Chase Inc. business card? Well, generally speaking, if you're new to credit in general or with Chase, then it's best to have some type of history built. So if you're kind of restarting from scratch, you'll want to get a credit card or two and establish a good payment history over a year, maybe even two years, before diving into business card or rewards cards in general. The Chase Freedom Flex and the Chase Freedom Unlimited are very good starter cards that you can build from. They're generally easy to get approved for, so I'll have those linked down in the description and a video about those for you as well. But along those same lines, having a relationship with Chase can go a really long way. You don't necessarily need to open up a business checking account or any type of business account with them. But having a personal credit card or two or even a personal checking account can help them build a relationship with you and develop trust, which will help you get approved for other credit cards, including business cards. And now, unfortunately, there's not a pre-approval website or a link that you can go to to see ahead of time what your chances are. However, sometimes you will get a piece of mail or an emailed advertisement saying that you've been pre-qualified or something along those lines. Now those won't guarantee you that you'll get approved, but it is a good sign that they may favor your application. And then some other common questions, whenever you do apply for the credit card, you will get hit with a hard inquiry. However, the balance and other information about this credit card will not follow you on your personal credit history. And so this is nice because if you have a high balance on your business credit card, for whatever reason, it will not reflect on your personal credit score. So because it's a hard inquiry, you still will get that slight decrease in your credit score right after you apply, but it should go back up. And now although it counts as a hard inquiry, and even if you do get approved, Chase business cards still do not count towards your 524 status. So this is great if you're right at 424, just keep applying to business cards, whether it be with Chase or someone else, to stay under 524. And then the cool thing about Chase business cards as well that you'll like to be aware of is that you can have multiple of the same Inc. business card and still be eligible for the sign up bonus a second time. Generally, you're able to do this if you apply for a card as a sole proprietor and then you apply for the card again with an LLC. Or if you have another business with a different LLC and EIN, then you could do that as well. Now with that being said, I really don't recommend that you abuse this. I got the Chase Inc. business cash card twice. However, that's probably the extent that I'm gonna do it. I'll probably get the Chase Inc. business preferred, which I haven't got yet. And then I'll probably cancel another Chase Inc. card before trying to get it another time. Because theoretically, if you are abusing this, Chase does have the right to claw back those points and shut you down. Now with all this said, let's jump into the application and let me show you what that's all about. But real quick, my name is Michael with Nurse Michael Travels. If you've enjoyed this so far, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Here where we talk about everything award travel and points and miles. Here's some more. So this is what it looks like whenever you click on the referral link down in the description of mine. Now just to real quick notate here, you've got the Chase Inc. Business Premier on the left here. This one is not the preferred. This one you'll want to ignore unless you're really interested in cash back but this cannot be converted to ultimate rewards, so therefore, I don't care for it. Plus, as a higher annual fee. I mean, meh. And so we've got the Inc. Unlimited, Business Cash, and the Preferred, and again, that Unlimited has a fat $900 cash back, which is 90,000 points in ultimate rewards. So we're gonna head and click on this Apply Now button. And that'll take you to the application here. And so we're gonna go ahead and fill this out as if we were gonna apply. And so as a business owner, you're typically the owner, unless you're not, in case you should know that yourself. But if you are a sole proprietor, it's just gonna be owner that you'll select. You'll put in your information. The suffix is optional if you're a junior, senior, the third, etc. You're gonna to need to know your mom's maiden name, put in your birthday, and then this, no matter if you're applying as an LLC or as a sole proprietor, put in your social security number. This is gonna be all of your personal information here. Put in your home address as normal. 
email address and phone number so if they have any issues they can contact you then you'll want to put in your total gross income again this is personal financial information so you'll just want to follow chase's tips here whenever you're trying to figure this out you know put your annual income from your job of course but then if any of this applies to you social security benefits public assistance seasonal jobs people paying for your bills you can count that within the total number as well just make sure you don't lie and put some outlandish number just to try to get whatever you're trying to get then we get to a little bit more confusing part if you're brand new to this legal business structure if you are just applying as a sole proprietor if you don't have an llc created then sole proprietorship is what you're going to want to select if you're a llc you'll want to select llc so if you're selecting sole proprietorship you'll just put in your legal name it doesn't have to be anything fancy don't put anything extra and then you can put your desired business name if you're putting down your llc it doesn't have to be your exact llc name and then it asks if you have a dba or another assumed name it's going to be no unless you filed a dba which is a specific form or something that you actively have to do so you would know if that's the case and then business tax id if you have an llc then you should also get an ein and if so you would just put that in however if you're a sole proprietor you're just going to put your social security number in and you'll just put that in again and then it asks for your physical business address if you're doing it from your home then just say yes it's the same as your personal address if it is from a different location then of course put that address down business phone number if you've got one otherwise just put your personal phone number and then your business established date now if you've got an llc you'll just put the date that you created the llc otherwise if it's a sole proprietorship just put the date that you start or roughly started the business that you're doing and then you've got your annual business revenue now this is revenue not profit so essentially any money coming in not necessarily what you're taking home and so there's a few ways to calculate this i mean if you're only in business for a month then you can take whatever revenue you got within that first month multiply it by 12 and put that down whenever i first got started with this youtube business i was very young and hadn't really brought in much i estimated 500 to a thousand dollars just because i wasn't sure when i would be monetized what kind of revenue i would actually bring it in so i put in that estimated amount even though it was low i just wanted to be honest and then for estimated monthly spend kind of same thing you know kind of estimate your expenses or what you expect to spend if you're just getting started in that business i put maybe a couple hundred dollars maybe three and I still got approved I, it was a low limit of three thousand dollars but hey that's all I needed to get the 75 90 thousand point sign up bonus and that's all I needed now I forgot this question up here it asks for the number of employees and it tells you what to put if you don't have any additional employees or any employees at all you're gonna put zero you do not count as an employee and just as a note if you're working with someone like as an editor most of the time it's going to be an independent contractor not someone that's an actual employee of your business and so that would not count and then at the end it'll ask if you want to add in any employees and so you could hit no most of the time and then you got paperless statements your pricing information and your certifications to read through and then you hit agree and submit and there you go you submitted for the card now once you submit your application if it's your first credit card with chase most of the time your application is going to go into review if this happens don't stress it's very common but if you have had a chase business card in the past you have the chance of being auto approved and so that's just cool if so if not then again don't stress here's what we'll do instead I typically wait until the next day and then I call the reconsideration line which is here I'll also put in the description for you just call them and let them know that you applied and that the credit card application went to review and say that you're checking on the status of it and you're wanting to know if there's any information that they need to help them make the decision if all is good then oftentimes they'll just say oh yeah you're approved and then at that moment you'll want to ask them oh hey can you expedite the shipping so that way you can get that card within a day or two and then immediately get started working on that sign up bonus and then once you get that 90,000 fat sign up bonus you'll want to start looking up ways to use those points in the best ways possible and to get to where you want to go and I made a playlist just for you showing you all the different ways to redeem your points and you can check that out here my name is Michael with Nurse Michael Travels I'll see you in the next one